Okay. Everyone ready for today's guest speaker presentation? Yes. You ready? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, today is October seventeenth, uh, I believe, uh, two thousand fifteen, and we are the Shakopee Heritage Society. And today we have a guest speaker, Marge Elfman, uh, from Shakopee, who is going to speak about the Raceway Park. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. And uh, Marge, uh, your presentation. Thank you again for being here, presenting. So, thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, I guess I started this project because. In uh, uh, 2009, or no, 2009, I can't remember the year. My sister and brother-in-law were going to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. And so I thought I would go to the Historical Society and get a few write-ups on when they raced back in the early days of Raceway Park, which was 1956 when they opened. And I got a little carried away, <laughs> and I, I took the articles from the Shakti Valley News because I knew they were still in existence and I could get permission to use them. And I got all the newspaper write-ups from 1956, day one through 2001. And that was the first book, 600 and some pages, which I do have black and white copies available if anybody is interested in them. And then in 2013, when the sad day came along that Raceway Park closed, I did a second book. That one's over 900 pages. Um, I have a black and white version and a colored version that I also have for sale. Uh, this is a picture taken in 2006 of Darwin and Mavis Dance the original owners of Raceway Park. This is one of the three of the four owners, John Ostick, John Hellendrum, and Darwin Hintz. Uh, there was another one in here, he is deceased. And we had pictures taken of all the past champions, and a lot of them are in this book. Give you a little information on Raceway. Raceway Park was the realization of a dream for 33-year-old Darwin Hintz in 1956. A native of Rochelle, South Dakota, he attended Stout Institute in Menominee, Wisconsin, after he was discharged from the paratroopers in 1945. A fellow student from California <coughs> who liked racing and mechanics talked Darwin into a partnership in a jalopy-type 1934 Ford, which they raced at local events. Darwin wanted to drive more, so he bought his own car, also a 1934 Ford. His racing career was successful until he flipped the car and totaled it up. He also raced late models for a brief time and some three-quarter midgets. He graduated with a degree in industrial engineering he moved to St. Paul where he worked for six years as a design engineer for Champion Motors and Scott Atwater. And this is funny because back in the day, my husband worked with Darwin Hintz. His dream was to get back into racing. So in 1955, he purchased an 85-acre tract of land just east of Shakopee on Highway 101 and constructed the original Raceway Park, a quarter mile bank oval dirt track. The first race was held on May 13, 1956. After two years, Darwin wanted something better. He knew asphalt was the answer. Then the Valley Industrial Park made him a good offer, such a good one he couldn't refuse it, for the land. So in 1957, he sold the track and bought the property just to the east, the old Oak Grove Dairy on the farmer Ed, former Ed Smith Park. <coughs> the new Raceway Park, the first one-third mile track in Minnesota, opened in 1958. It would provide seating for 3,000 fans for light and night racing. Later, the stands were expanded the fans grew, the car counts registered for racing were over 100, 100 cars on a weekend event. 
including powder puffs and midgets. On July 4, 1964, 4,000 fans attended the mid-season championship event. The largest weekend crowd of 5,000 was on August 6, 1964. And I believe there were a couple in the past few years where there were a lot more, especially the final night. That night, you couldn't park for two miles around. Mm -hmm. The Raceway Park owners, 1956 Darwin Hens on the dirt track, 1958 Darwin Hens on the asphalt, 1971 Darwin leased Raceway Park to Phil Stewart. Phil also ran Elko Speedway and Twin City Speedway it was known as the Tri-City Circuit. <coughs> um, after Phil Stewart died in 1974, Darwin resumed running Raceway Park. 1983, it was bought by John Ostick. 1995, it was purchased by John Hellendrum. 2009, Donnie Reavers. 2011, John Hellendrum got it back and ran it until it closed in September 2013. The first location was the dirt track approximately a half mile from the current location across from Valley Fair near Brambrillis. They opened May 13, 1956 with Saturday and Sunday afternoon racing. Lights were added June 28, 1956 for night racing. During the week, the grandstands and building the grandstands and buildings were upgraded shortly after. Bob Upkin was named the first early model champion. 1957, it ran on the dirt. 1958, Raceway Park opened May 1st. It was the very first bank speedway in the state of Minnesota and one of the first in the upper Midwest. Darwin was smart in designing the track as he constructed the grandstands facing east so the fans wouldn't be looking into the bright sun and evening, bright afternoon and evening sun and out of the west northwest winds. Ron Olson was the winner of the very first asphalt race, 1958, with Norm Cetron being named late model champion. <coughs> There's a picture of this in my second book Ron Olson carried the very first American flag in 1958 for that first race. He also carried the American flag in 2013 at the last race. And I had the honor of riding with him. It's a day I'll never forget. 1958, WCCO Television prevailed began broadcasting from Raceway Park on Sunday afternoons when the Minnesota Twins away games were blacked out. 1965, Raceway Park suddenly closed in July after a heated dispute between drivers and officials over violating of racing rules in the modified division. The track remained closed the remainder of the 1965 season. 1987, Raceway Park became NASCAR. <coughs> Funny story to share, my dad used to rent the land where the last Raceway Park was. He always had a real good crop of beans. And he was very sad when Raceway opened, or Raceway opened and he couldn't plant beans anymore. And he went out to pay the rent and the guy said, can't do it. So the so they're going to build a racetrack. And you know, after going out there for so many, many years, I thought the only thing that grew on that property was sandburrs. I can't believe anybody growing beans. Uh, it was very sad to, be, to see Raceway Park close. After 57 years, it was America's first and finest. Thanks for the memories. Do you want to say anything about the, the book at all? Yeah, you do have a book. Um, 
Oh, I still have a whole bunch of them for sale. I have the black and white first copy. which is uh, all the newspaper articles from 1956 to 2001. 637 pages. The second one, Raceway Park Final Final, 2002 to 2013. Um, I have black and white and I have a colored version. There is lots of pictures. Um, we tried our best to contact a lot of the old champions to get bios from them. And we also got a lot of bios from drivers. To me, they were all champions. But we also got a lot of bios from them too. And um, I live in Shakopee. My phone number is 952-303-5101. If anyone is interested in purchasing books, I would be very happy to assist and personally autograph them all. Thank you. Mark, what was, what was the dispute that happened in the race to, about the rules? <laughs> it had something to do with the rules okay. and the officials. Oh. Oh. And about, so, about modifying the vehicles? Yeah, or something, the modified class. And uh, so they just decided, Darwin said, if that's the way you're going to be, you're not racing the rest of the year. Mark's that uh, VIP area that was added on afterwards where people could uh, rent that area. That Up was, on top in the tower. Uh, it was off to the side. Oh, that, uh, the big picnic area. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of groups would come out and they would serve food. And uh, it was called the party deck. And there were a lot of private groups and sponsors that used to to be up there. The Heritage Society was given two hundred dollars by a insurance to uh, insurance agents donated five hundred dollars a piece. The company wanted them to give money in the community, and I was invited down there. And, and we came at the halftime on the track with an oversized check for a thousand dollars, and it started by me just asking for a pencil from one of the agents. Wow. <laughs> That's an interesting story. So you mentioned, oh, Marge, I can remember many times seeing golf carts and uh, also vehicles parked on the property in the off season. Was that? Yeah, he used to, uh, John Hellendrum used to rent out the parking lot oh, that in the it. winter. Okay. In fact, a few years ago, and maybe you guys remember, but I don't remember the exact year, but it's not that long ago when we got all that terrible snow. Yes. They were dumping snow in the parking lot out there. Oh, yeah, because they didn't have a place to put it. Put it. So they put oh, it all out in. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about uh, Mort Mortensen yes. working out there years ago. Yes. Okay. Um, Mort was something else. You know, I'm sure a lot of you people knew him, and he had a very dry sense of humor. <laughs> so I'm asking him, this is about the time I'm going to do the first book. I said, you got any stories you want to share? He didn't have any pictures left. I think his kids had them all. He said, yeah, I got a story to share. He said, Darwin Hens came up to me one day, and he said, Roy Stein, the flight man that had been there forever, I think retired, came back and retired a second time. Darwin says, will you be my flag man, new flag man? And Mort looked at him very serious and he said, no way I'm not going to be your flag man. And Darwin said, well, what's the problem? What's the matter? Mort looked at him and he said, you dummy, I'm left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> that was Mort. You just, you just had to know him. That story is in the second book. How, how long ago did they start where you could rent uh, one of the blue cars and go out there as a novice? Yeah, I'm around? not sure. I can't remember the you, exact date. Do you remember date. how much it cost? Right I think it was like $50. To go around X number of times? Oh, those. Those were the track cars. That I think might have been like maybe 200 200 per person. But you used to be able to pay like $50 and then uh, a driver would take a passenger 
and go around and couple laps. When did they start the power pumps? 1956. Oh, when the tracks. Oh, yeah. Why did they know that? Yeah. Yeah. Norman Norderman. That was, yes. I could see her. Norman Norderman, uh, my sister. Sure. Um, I'd have to look in the first book. But there were a lot of them. And this is something when I, when I started looking at the Historical Society and looking up these newspaper articles, gee, isn't that an interesting headline? The powder puffs had more rollovers tonight than the guys did. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister has a story in my second book, and it's like, it's a really funny feeling when you flip that car and your head's like this far from the asphalt. <laughs> oh yeah, she was, uh, oh yeah, she had a lead foot. Did you ever race March? No, uh, just play. 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 You know, on days when we could go out and just kind of play around, but it was only one car on the track at a time. But yeah, there's a picture of me in the race car in my book. <laughs> but my sister, my brother-in-law, um, I had an ex-son-in-law that raced out there. Um, my daughter, my granddaughter, and my son-in-law now, he runs once in a while at Elko. But uh, I've been out there like three, four times this year, but oh, yes. it'll never be raceway. You know, people would say, how come the old barn is there? How come they just, they never built anything new? That's what was so special about Raceway Park. You know, remember back in the day when <laughs> some kid climbed up on the tree, he wound up going in with a broken leg because he fell out of the tree, out of the parking lot. <laughs> and if there was an incident on the track that they, somebody had to go to the hospital, you sat in the stands and entertained yourself for 20 minutes till the ambulance got back because they couldn't run the races without it. <laughs> then in later years, they had a backup. But. Uh, yeah, many fun times. Couple of weddings out there. Uh, two that were right down on the start finish line. Two friends of mine that got married out there. Mm -hmm. And there were, I think there was one in the pits, in the pits lab out there one night. Mm -hmm. And there was one a couple of years ago that was not on race night. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, well, yeah, they've done a little bit of everything out there. But, uh, and when I heard Raceway was closing, I brought a great big, huge Ziploc bag so I could fill it up with sand. Because I had to have sand from Raceway Park. For two reasons. And, and I had to make sure I had the sand burrs in there. Yes. <laughs> and I also have a, a chunk of asphalt. Turn one. <laughs> Hard to see those old things go. Yeah. And what was so funny about that piece of asphalt, I just don't know why I wanted that specific piece. <laughs> well, there's no way I could pick it up and lift it, so I asked one of the drivers if he'd do it for me. This was a week or two weeks after the track closed. And he said, that's a young guy, he said, did you know there was another track underneath this one? And I said, well, yeah, because they had built both the ends uh -huh. up. He said, he brushed the dirt off the back, and he said, look at this. There was a green belt beer cap embedded oh. in the back of that piece of asphalt. <laughs> That's <what you're> <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even know it was there until no. he brushed the dirt yeah. off. Yeah. Yes. But um, yeah, it, was, it was fun. It was funny. So Marge, you said uh, you donated a book and it's going to be at the Shockley Library and all they have to do is ask? Uh, no, no? I, the book I am donating today goes to the Shockley Heritage Society. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Maybe the library will want to make a, a purchase too. Yeah, I talked to her about this a while back and Bob? she said, we're working on our budget. Well, and I never friends, heard. I never heard anything from. I'm with friends of the library. We will be buying a book from you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, they bought one of the first books because some lady, and she is now retired, I can't remember her name, Janet something. Wait. She worked in Savage. Yeah. yeah. She's on the mayor. And she bought five black and white books. And I said, you have to make sure one goes to New Prague because we have a lot of drivers from that area. Mm -hmm. And it was Shakopee, um, Savage, yeah. New Prague, I can't Belkine, remember where the other two, maybe Elko mm -hmm. New Market. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Because there's been a lot of drivers from out in that area over the years. And yeah, it was a uh, it was a very fun project. I hated to do it that early, but <laughs> what can I do? They closed. But like I said, how much does it cost to put a book together in that fashion? Uh, it depends upon where you take it. And depends upon how many you have made. Sure. Oh, yeah. I took it to a guy out in uh, Arlington. He did the last one. The first ones were done in uh, Brainerd. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much thank you. for having me.